And we're back for the second half action as Garinger down 35 to zip tries to get on the scoreboard at the Harding homecoming, which has been nothing but a Harding feast and a drought by Garinger. Jeff, some big stats at half for Anthony Houston. We bragged on him and he came through for us in the first half. And as we see, uh, the hometown cable three game of the week at half. Jeff? Well, we take a look at the numbers of the first half. As you said, pretty much one-sided. Total offense, Harding with 241 yards of offense compared to only 68 for the Wildcats. The big story, the passing game. Anthony Houston completed six of nine for 111 yards and three touchdowns. A uh, touchdown on the first play of the game, as a matter of fact. His backup Ed Lawing, one of two for 15. In the ground game, Jonathan Byers has carried 12 times for 98 yards. And two touchdowns. Anthony Wa Antonio Walker, two carries for 13 yards. Anthony Houston, one carry for four yards himself. In the receiving department, Kenny Stevenson, two receptions, 49 yards, and a touchdown. Robert Johnson, two receptions, 31 yards, and two touchdowns. Calvin Smith, one reception for 12 yards. Lenny Helms, one for 19. And number 83, one for 15. As we get set to start the second half, and Harding will receive. And it looks like there was a penalty at the end of the first half on Harding. So Geringer will kick off from the 45-yard line of Harding. And it's fielded by the short man, number 73. And he's going to run it back to about the 24-yard line. And that was John Brevard. One of the highlights of his high school career, I'm sure. John Brevard, you see him going to the sideline. Gets a little bit of the offensive action there, returning that kick. But Geringer in the first half, only 68 yards of offense, most of it on the ground. They had uh, 52 on the ground. Miller with 22 on five carries. Carter with nine on one carry. And Rainey with 21 on seven carries. First down, Harding. Pitch out goes to Byers. Byers is over the 100-yard mark as he gets across the 25 to about the 27, which is a pickup of about four yards, I believe. Well, the, one of the reasons, you, and you may ask, why Anthony Houston is starting off the second half, it's uh, momentum, Jeff. You've got to keep their spirits high. They only get to play one half. That can do something to their ego that, uh, you know, they get the big head. They need to come out and prove that they can do it again because next week they're going to have a tougher challenge. Uh, up 35 to zip, they need to go ahead and act like they're starting off zip, zip. And uh, Coach Knotts, I'm sure, wants to see that offense in tune again in the second half. Byers going to pick up good yardage on the left side. That's right. He gets it inside, outside the 30 to about the 34, so that's a pickup of close to four more. And Byers keeps on running very well. It's a lot of fun when you've got a quarterback like Anthony Houston that can thread the needle 30 yards down the field, and you're the halfback because you get the, uh, the chances that you get the run. You've got uh, blitzing linebackers trying to get to Houston and you get stunning linemen and it just opens up such big holes when you get uh, good blocking by your offensive line and Byers has picked them up in bunches tonight. So it's first down and 10 at the 35. Harding, Houston is back to pass. He's got some time going over the middle. Short pass. That might have been deflected. Didn't look like uh, a typical Houston pass. Didn't have much on it. He was looking for Robert Johnson. He got nailed that time in the backfield by 72 from Geringer. That's Sean Council, one of the team captains. And that's going to happen. Once you get to Houston, he becomes ineffective. I think one of the, the drawbacks of Houston that we saw in the previous year, maybe not tonight, was he's been Mr. Spectacular tonight. But uh, he does not throw well on the run. And if you can flush him out of that pocket, his percentage of passing goes down. Oh, he's going to throw high and over Robert Johnson that time. Tried a little quick out pass, and Houston ended up on his back. Pass was incomplete, so Garinger got a little bit of pressure on that time. And we start the second half. Houston is 0 for 2. And we've got to look at the Garinger defense, too, Jeff. They're going to play this game as if it's a zip-zip game, uh, tied 0-0 at half, and they're going to try to shut down this Harding offense, and that will be a plus in their favor. Yes, they will be improving in the second half if they can shut the Harding offense down. That's right, improving quite a bit if they can do it. Seven men up close to the line for the defense. Houston call signals, back to pass. Had pressure coming, got the ball away, complete to Johnson. Johnson shrugs two tackles, still on his feet. And finally knocked down at the 46-yard line of Garinger. That's complete for 10, 
gain of about 19 yards. Well, that's a passing combination, isn't it? You get Stevenson that probably led the county in receptions last year, and then you bring in a kid, number 11. That's uh, Robert Johnson, and he comes in and <laughs> lights up the scoreboard. Yes, he is. He's he is. a sophomore. Byers up the middle with good yardage again. Byers gets his way inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line, so it's a pickup of about seven or eight. Byers has uh, had an exceptional night. I would almost venture to say, Jeff, that if Harding runs this play, uh, gets a touchdown right here, that uh, the five degrees that it's cooled off from the beginning of the game to the second half and the score going up to 42, we're going to get to see a lot of Garinger fans leave this one early. And so it's second down. They need about four. Houston back to pass. Rolls to the near side. Sets throwing deep. He's looking for Stevenson. And oh, what a catch. Great catch. What a catch. Oh, <laughs> baby. Oh, they're going to say he trapped it. So incomplete. Mercy. Stevenson fell back, had to fall backwards to make the catch. He was pressured pretty well by number 38 on the defense, Anthony Barney. But he just fell back and looked like he made a great catch. But uh, the officials are a lot closer than we are. They say that he trapped it. So it's incomplete. Like to have that one in slow motion. It looked like he came up with the play, but Stevenson didn't put up much of an argument there, so he must have trapped the ball. Of course, when you're ahead 35 to nothing. I never was a good referee <laughs> anyway. Third down and four. Handoff up the middle. Byers has first down yardage and a lot more. He's all the way down to the 30 to about the 28-yard line. A pickup. Well, it looked like about seven yards or so. The way you judge a quarterback's arm is by the way he throws a deep down and out. And to pick up the first down a while ago on the last first down, Houston threw it as well as could be expected, picked up about 15 yards. So first down and 10 at the 29. Houston on first down, dumps it out to 22, makes a good cut. He gets down, tackle down at the 20. Kyle Knowles came over to finish the job, but the pass was complete to uh, Calvin, Calvin Smith. And Smith picked up about seven on the play. It looks like he could complete that pass anytime he wanted it. So it's second down and three. Receivers wide to both sides. Handoff fires up the middle, and he's going to be stopped this time. A rare occasion. Fires maybe got a yard. That's about all. Be the first time that the Gar well, the second time Garinger has stopped him tonight. He got stopped. He's been getting he's been getting about seven yards a carry. It seems like every time he runs the ball on first down, it's second and three, second and four. So. Byers is having an excellent night. Well, they stopped him that time, but he still got two yards out of it. So third and one. Handoff up the middle, Byers. Bounces off one tackle, drags people a few yards. He's got the first down. He was initially stopped. And he picks up close to five yards again. We'll make it four. And he's got 132 yards on the night. 18 carries for 132 yards. Picking up in the second half where he left off in the first half. And when you've got a running back that uh, can run like that, I mean, he's had holes to run through. Granted, a great job by the offensive line, but he's been carrying people when he has been hit. So he's shown he's got some strength, too. Receivers wide to both sides. First and 10 for Harding. Houston to the end zone. Wide, wide open. open. Yep. Touchdown to number 83. And that's going to be a 14-yard touchdown pass. It's going to be interesting to see when Coach Knotts decides to pull out the stars and go with the second string. They work hard in practice every week, and I know when I was on the second string, I appreciated the, the PT, the play in time. And we just found out number 83 is Joey Hustetler. As and we get the, the extra point the is good by number 25 from Harding. And we don't have a number 25. Jeff, I'm going to have to go to you with that. Who is their extra point? That's a good question. I don't have him on my roster either. Okay. We just found out who Hustedler was, number 83. So we'll give you number 25's name here momentarily. 
making the extra point for Harding. As he's done several times tonight with 6.43 to play here in the third quarter. Garinger 42. Hard, I mean, Harding 42 and Garinger nothing. Wildcats having a rough time. Harding is on a roll. We're going to go with Barry Butler, number 25, Jeff. So scratch his name in. Barry Butler got the point after. Barry, we got to get your name in the on the roster 20 25 30 and out to the 35 and finally stopped the Wildcats on the return that was Thompson Flaherty kicked it well it was a big up for Harding to win last week there's no doubt about it Jeff I'm sure coach Knotts appreciates the effort they're putting forward tonight sometimes you, you go into a slump and you play the, the game of the year and then your offense kind of lays down on you uh oh the defense did this time and that's Sean Kelly making the catch for Garinger. A big catch, Rainey to Kelly. 20. That was Terrace Jones, number eight, and Dwayne Hill, number 33, keeping the shutout alive for Harding. 28-yard connection for Rainey, though. <laughs> Looked like a bear coming after him, didn't it, Jeff? Nice defensive play by 33 that time. That was Dwayne Hill again. Big 78 for Harding. Looked like the Russian bear, Daryl Gray, coming in after him. Rainey back to pass, stumbles a little bit, and throws downfield. He has a man open. Sean Kelly was the man he wanted, but couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So going deep for Kelly. And had Kelly been able to get a little further downfield, they could have connected. I think we have a penalty flag downfield. We do have one deep downfield. It might be pass interference against the defense, but let's see. Legal Illegal procedure against. Yeah, it's against Harding. So there are too many men on the field, I believe, Jeff. Illegal yeah. substitution. I was waiting to hear that illegal participation call we heard uh, a couple weeks ago in college. Back to pass quickly, throwing over the middle. Kelly nice makes play. a catch. Sean Kelly to the 11-yard line. And that is a 20-yard pass by Rainey to Kelly. That pass took for 25 yards. We'll make it 25 yards. Throwing oh, down the middle, boy. almost intercepted. So Rainey tried to rifle it. He's lucky that time. If Terrace Jones wouldn't have had Butterfingers on that, he would have had an interception. He was right in his mitts. Tried to throw that in the middle of a, looked like a three men in that zone right in one area. Well, this time he throws way too high. He was trying to go the other way to Brian Waugh, and it's incomplete. They're going in a hurry-up offense, uh, Garinger is. Of course, they're down by 42 points. So. Third down and 10 coming up at the 10 yard line. Wildcats have two receivers lining up to the far side. They should have one to the near side. On the far side, they have Eric Carter along with Sean Kelly, Brian Watt to the near side. Back to pass, has a little bit of time, throwing uh, caught by Thompson. Touchdown. Thompson's got the end zone. Touchdown, Garinger and Tom, that is history. For this year, our first hometown Cable 3 non-shutout of 1986. That pass, 11 yards for the touchdown, and Garinger gets on the scoreboard. It comes at the same time we have our first blowout. <laughs> this is true also. But an 11-yard touchdown. Extra point, two-point conversion. That's good. Caught by Sean Kelly. Well, I'm going to tell you this, Rainey, given time, can he can thread the needle, too. He's got a good arm. They gave him adequate pass protection that time, and Rainey came through with about three passes in a row. And he came down. He did a good job hitting Kelly, finally finding David Thompson, and a touchdown. The Wildcats get on the scoreboard, two-point conversion, and with 5.28 to play in the third quarter, Harding 42 and Garinger 8. So the Wildcats have gotten on the scoreboard. As we said, we were the first game of 1986 that we have had both teams get on the scoreboard. 
in the hometown cable three game of the week. So that's good to see. There's been a lot of offense already tonight, though. Well, next week we're going to be at Myers Park. That's as right. As the Eagles invade the Mustang country. East Mech Eagles off to a real good start. Myers Park having their share of problems. Uh, have not won a conference game this year. In fact, I'm not sure, but they may be winless on the season. There is the kick, a short kick. Fielded by Harding, though, so the onside kick attempt doesn't fool anyone. Harding has the ball at about midfield. That looked like 68, Raymond Crenshaw. And he gets a boost to his morale. Gets an official kickoff return on hometown cable three. T. Ray along with Jeff Harlow and the all-volunteer staff bringing you this game tonight. And they're all turning in a great job as usual. Receivers to both sides, first and 10 for the Rams. Houston has some company, a lot of it. He goes, rolls, throws, incomplete. And the flag is gonna fly. Pass was intended for Johnson. It's gonna be an ineligible receiver downfield. It looked like 55 for Harding. Had moved downfield and we'll see if that's gonna be the call. And waiting for the official indication. They may have a huddle to discuss it. Kyle Knowles comes over. As you see him heading back to the defensive huddle for the Wildcats. Anything that'll keep the clock running, Jeff. And we're going to have a, a little meeting of the officials there. Meeting of the minds with 4.57 left in the third quarter. Hardy winning in a big way on homecoming night, 42 to 8. As you said, next week we're going to be at Myers Park, there's the official indication. Against an Harding. Receiver downfield. And Eagle Eye Tom Ray, you got it on that one. You can pick an offensive tackle or an offensive guard downfield. Easy. They're the big boys. Unless, of course, Antonio Walker happens to go out for a pass, then it's a little hard to tell. Yeah, but he doesn't have one of those funny numbers on his jersey that you see downfield. So they, usually to, they usually try to hit the ineligible receiver right in the gut with it so he knows that uh, the penalty is on him and what is he doing down there anyway. So it's now second down and 15. Handoff goes nowhere. The defense meant it. That was David Petty, number seven, getting a carry. That's the first time we've seen him tonight. And Petty got nowhere. Petty Back has to feel problem. like he's snake bit. He comes in for one carry and loses about two yards on a draw play. Good defensive surge that time. They're digging in. Byers is back there now. Third down and seventh. Three receivers on the near side. Back to pass is Houston. He rolls, sets, throwing deep. Wants Johnson. Oh, what oh, a he caught it. Oh, my what a well, yes, what, we what a have? catch. Well, wait a minute. Oh. It, Johnson looked like he had it, then it ended up in the hands. It's caught. I guess. So let's see. We have flags down, though. He lost it, then he pulled it back down, but then we saw 83 coming up with the ball for Garinger. So it's an interception, maybe, for the Wildcats. I don't believe so. I think they're going to say Johnson caught that ball well, and he they, got it. You're right. They just did. They indicated a Harding ball. So Harding comes up with a big play. They're going to call either pass interference. We're not sure. We're on the defense or a great catch by Johnson. And that is. That looked like a Lynn Swan like about catch. about a 36-yard reception for yes, Johnson. And first and 10 for Harding. Houston rolling, throwing for the end zone. Stevenson has it, touchdown. And Stevenson catches it, a 20-yarder. Mm, 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 mm. And it's another touchdown. And he is piling it up. He now has 207 yards on the night in the passing. And that is his... Let's see, one, two, three. They have a peculiar way of five touchdown passes. They have a peculiar way of adding to the extra point. They all line up on one side of the field except for 
uh, the center, the kicker, and the holder. I know why they do it, but I don't know why they do it if you understand what I'm saying. I'm sure it's a habit and uh, that they're trying to get into, like teamwork or whatever, but uh, it seems kind of <laughs> weird unless you're going to have some kind of special playoff of it, Jeff. So the extra point was good. There you see the score. Harding 49 and Garinger 8. And Harding's offense has done everything it's wanted to tonight. Anthony Houston over 207 yards in the air has five touchdown passes. You sure that's Houston and not Dan Marino out there? Jonathan Byers has 18 carries for 132 yards. He's got a couple of touchdowns himself, and the Rams are red hot and rolling. Flaherty will kick off to the Wildcats. Deep to receive, Thompson and Miller, you see there. We've got three minutes and 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Well, it's going to take a funny hop. Thompson has trouble with it. Looked like he wanted to pass there for a second. Now he's going to keep it 20. Cuts up the middle. Good cut by Thompson. Had nowhere to go, so he took it right up the middle. We got a flag down as Thompson goes down. And we have an injured Wildcat on the field. Back up field at about the 40. And the trainers are out. Well, we do have a flag down, so let's see. We got a 10 yard return. That's number 80 for Harding, and he got uh, leveled. That's Vincent Guy. He was blindsided coming down the field that time. I believe 33 on the block for Garinger provided the blow. That's Reggie Miller. And uh, he caught him good coming kind of diagonal across the field and lowered the boom. Well, they're going to help 80 off the field, but he's not the man I was referring to. A Garinger player is also down being helped up. So we had two people go down. 55 for the Wildcats went down. He's getting up now. And that's good to see. That's Tracy Buckman. So. Buckman and number 80 for Harding. Vincent Guy was the other person that went down. We saw the face mask indication, so that moves it up. And the Wildcats take over first and 10 at the 40 yard line to get started with 335 left in the third quarter. Back to pass on first down. Rainey going to air it out. Wants Kelly, but throws too far. Kelly can't get there. Good coverage by O'Neill Falcon. Show an incomplete pass. I believe that was 33, Dwayne Hill on the pass defense that time. You know, we hadn't heard a whole lot about O'Neill Falcon. He was one of the mainstays in the defense and I believe offense last year. Pressure came in a hurry. He had to get the pass off, threw it high. Dwayne Hill was covering and Kelly unable to come down with it. So Rainey had to hurry. There's Dale Rainey, the quarterback of the Wildcats. He's not had the type of game that his counterpart on the other side of the field has, but has thrown some pretty respectable passes of his own, especially on that drive for the score earlier. Back to pass. He has to scramble out. Good job by Rainey to get away, and he gets pummeled as he gets it back to the 40-yard line. So he There's O'Neill Fal Falcon. We've been waiting on him tonight. Rainey has to carry at that time. He got nothing on it, but he did get back to the line of scrimmage. Good job just to do that. Fourth down coming up. There's O'Neill Falcon, an all-county player from a year ago for the Harding Rams. It takes a, a good human being to do what Walker did. Most halfbacks have an have a ego problem. They, they see themselves as a star. And for two years, Antonio Walker was the star at Harding. And now he has gone to defense and has accepted it graciously. Uh, I guess he doesn't like getting bruised. He likes dishing out the beating. Well, they're going to very close to roughing the punter that time. But the punt is away. It takes a good bounce for the Wildcats inside the 20. And it's going to be down to at about the 15-yard line. So Harding takes over at their own 15 with 2.20 to play in the third quarter and the Harding Rams out in front 49 to 8. I hope they keep the ball on the ground this time and keep that clock rolling Jeff. This game was decided early in the first quarter. To the ball at their own 25. No question about that. Harding wasted no time showing what they plan to do. They went to the air the first play of the game got a touchdown and it's been all Harding since then. 
with the exception of the one touchdown for Garinger. Pass complete to number three, Kenny Stevenson. And Stevenson gets about 16 on it. And Harding has set the tempo. They are making some people angry at Garinger with their starter still in the lineup, trying to pour it on up 49 to eight. And I have to admit, if I was a Garinger, I would put this back in my mind and wait till next year's game and hope I could reverse the trend a little bit. So they continue to do the damage. Houston's still in the ball game. And I don't know if this out wise. You know, you're risking an injury on the, doing this. And uh, up the middle, and I think I was Byers getting the call. No, it was number seven. So that is Petty. David Petty. David Petty picking up about six. Good carry by Petty. You know, you are risking an injury to your quarterback, and Garinger is known for being a hard-hitting team. So I don't know if you want to leave your quarterback out there. A lot of frustration. You're allowed to get a cheap shot, and a penalty doesn't do you much good if your quarterback gets sidelined for the end, of, you know, the rest of the season. Petty and again. Petty breaks to the outside. Good move. He's going places Mid with this. All the way to midfield and down to the 40 mm. and to about the 37. So 20, 25. About 28 yards by Petty. Good carry by David Petty. Mm, 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 mm. Petty read his blocks that time, broke to the outside and picked up good yards. He set up some blocks that time on the linebackers and uh, cornerbacks that time on the outside. Made the move to the outside and picked up about 20 good yards. So first and 10, Harding of the Garinger 38-yard line. Receivers to the near side. Houston calls signals. Back to pass. Pressure coming from behind. He's blindsided and hit. 42 gets Houston. And Houston never saw him coming. That was Tim Marshall. If I were Coach Knotts, I would get him out of the lineup right now. That's enough. That's a loss on the play of about 11. And I agree. It's, it's just not, not a wise thing to do. There's no need to leave your quarterback in there. And he's nothing more right now than a target. Garinger has nothing to lose. That's the end of the third quarter. Your quarterback takes a shot like that. It's time to get him out. He's, the man's worth his weight in gold to Harding's hopes for a state championship. That's right. And we've come, as you say, to the end of the third quarter here at Harding. The Harding Rams way out in front of the Garinger Wildcats, 49 to 8. So we'll be getting set for the fourth quarter. As we said, you know, Anthony Houston's already had a brilliant night. Has 223 yards in the air. He's thrown for five touchdown passes. The game is without any doubt uh, wrapped up. No need to do this type of thing, to keep your starters in and, and just rub it in. I know this is homecoming. You like to give the fans a lot to cheer about, but it's not worth it risking a possible injury to a quarterback that uh, can make the difference between a playoff team and maybe not a playoff team. He's going to hand it off this time. Byers. Byers breaking tackles. He's finally brought down across the 50 to the 47. So Byers getting uh, really just about three yards on the play. He has had a great night. 19 carries, 135 yards. I'd say it's about time to take him out, too, and bring in some of your backups. This is a game where homecoming, like you said, Tom, you like to see your backups play. and. When you got a lead like this, there's no reason why everybody shouldn't get a chance. Third down and about 15. Receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Houston keeps himself, rolls near side. A lot of pressure. He's taken down again by Tim Marshall. Also there, 66 was there too. Marshall's like a bad dream, isn't he? He's been uh, back there in the pocket twice with Houston. Charles Kirby, 66, was there also, and Houston loses wide a bit of yards lost at 12. The luckiest thing that happened to Houston was that he ducked that time because he was getting ready to get popped real good. So fourth down 27 they'll punt it away and they had all sorts of pressure coming the punter got knocked down the punt did not go very far and it's down at the 43 yard line so 85 got the punt away for Harding. And it will be the Wildcats football with 10.40 left in the game, a 49 to eight score. And we'll see the Wildcats with their starters still in the game. Rainey throwing on oh, first down. Oh, good catch by 
Sean Kelly brought down by Walker. Kelly got down to the 40. That is complete for about 16 yards. Good catch by Kelly. The pass was a little bit high. It's a good thing it was high because Sean had that one time just right. The pass went over his head. He took a chance on intercepting it. Uh, that would have been six points the other way. So, Garrett, you're trying to get set. 96 yards now in the air for Dale Rainey. So, he's trying to get things going. 85 of those belong to Sean Kelly, though. Back to pass. Throwing. It's incomplete. Intended for Waugh. Waugh was thinking about Damon Bullock's hit getting ready to come up and didn't hold on to it. And Kelly uh, shaking his hand there a little bit. Sean Kelly was hit on the play, and he is at the bench. They're calling for assistance. So you hope that's not something serious. Waugh caught that one. Complete for... Back to pass. He's going to run it himself all the way down inside the 20 to the about the 17 yard line. Rainey's a gutsy ball player just to be still in this ball game. Wow. He got about 13 yards on that run. Gives him 34 for the night. Like we talked about earlier in the year, when you see a football player laying face down, he is in trouble. And a man down, who's now up, who's number 82. Either that, he wanted to get some TV time. We look at the band from Harding. Rainey has gone over 100 yards now passing, so he's making some good plays. Back to pass again. Under pressure, comes to the near side. He's going to keep himself. Saw some daylight. Keeps running forward inside the 20 to the 15. And he picks up about four yards. A lot of scrambling, but got four yards out of it. They're going with a quick snap. Back to pass. Two-minute offense. Pressure coming. Scrambling. More pressure. Wow. He's got a hole up the middle. Lost the football, and Harding is all around it. I think they've got it. They do. And so Rainey in trouble, trying to scrambling with the ball. He got knocked loose, and the Rams have recovered the fumble. He got out of some dangerous situations to wait that late in that play to fumble. Did a good job to stay alive that long. But 8.38 left in the game, and Harding comes up with a turnover. And Ed Lawing, number 15, is in the ball game now, a quarterback for Harding. So Anthony Houston apparently has through for the night. Lawing, first play, keeps himself, doesn't get much, gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. You can run through some quarterbacks that way, Jeff. Bring him fresh in off the bench, and then he calls his own number. Keeper around the right end. And had nowhere to go. And it's a good idea to give Lawing some playing time because Lawing is their quarterback of, uh, for next year, more than likely. And all the experience he can gather this year will be helpful to prepare him for next year because Let's Houston will be gone. Mm, I'm surprised they're not trying to hand the ball off to Petty. That was a lateral. And that was tipped away. So third down. From Harding, you, we've come to expect the unexpected. And we've gotten it. Third down and about 20 for Harding. Ball marked at about the 10, well, nine yard line, I guess, sir. So 7.40 now left. The give is up the middle. That's Not the much Petty room. Yes. Petty got the call. Yeah, number seven. Got to the 16. So he picked up a yard, maybe. 
and some diehard Garinger fans are still here. Their troops trail by 41 points with 7.17 left in the fourth quarter. And they're going to punt it away, number 85. High punt, short punt. It's going to take a roll for Harding, though. Well, now it's going to bounce back. So it's down at the 38. Garinger will have the ball first and 10 at the Harding 38-yard line. Correct a graphic we had a couple moments ago. We had number 42 for North Mecklenburg, but that was incorrect. It's for Garinger. It was number 42, Tim Marshall. Back to pass the quarterback. Dumps the screen to Thompson. Thompson. Ooh, got what a block that time by 84. And then Thompson got knocked out of bounds, but picks up five out of it. Garinger first down, they need five, second and five rather. Throwing over the middle, and Watt could not hold on. That was a timing pattern that time, the number 80 from Garinger. That was Brian Wall. Brian Wall, and Brian just threw it behind him. Or Byron Wall, rather. Back to pass, under pressure, Rainey. Gets sacked. This time he doesn't get away. Chad Armstrong, number 89, brings him down for the defense. It's a loss on the play of four yards. So fourth down now for the Wildcats. They'll go for it. There you see Chad Armstrong, 89, for the Harding Rams. 6.23 now left in the game. The Wildcats want a timeout, and Dale Rainey wants to come over and talk with head coach Ken Lawrence to see just what they want to do. Obviously, they'll go for it. When you're down 49 to eight, it doesn't really matter if you make it or if you don't. I've never seen a quarterback quite as slippery as Rainey. He it looks like he just jukes. He takes a jitter step, jitter bugs back there and buys a little bit more time. And uh, we get a good look at the sidelines. That's Ken Lawrence, the head coach at Garinger. And you know, uh, as you said, uh, Rainey has had a good game. He has come out of the game now, though, and a new quarterback is in. Number 13 is in now. But uh, I must say a, a tremendous improvement by Dale Rainey in this game over what we saw earlier when he was uh, playing against North Mecca earlier in the season. He has done a super job tonight despite the fact that he's been pressured all night. Quarterback in the game now is number 13 for the Wildcats, Chris Digsby. And on first down, he wants to throw and throws high and over it is intended receiver number 84. And so Digsby. And Harding takes over first and 10 on their own 41 yard line. Up by 41 points. You should have been here early folks if you missed it. Harding got out on top in the first quarter and did not let it up. If you want to see a team that went for the jugular vein early then you saw the first quarter of this ball game because that's how it's done. In fact, they scored on the very first play of uh, the game for their offense. Uh, wasted no time. And they have first and ten. Ed Lawing is the quarterback. Receivers to both sides. Lawing pitches out to Petty. Petty to the near side. Tries to get to the corner and gets uh, about a yard on the play. That's all. So good pursuit that time by the defense. It'll be second down and about nine. Well, they get less than the yard, about a half yard, so make it second and nine and a half. Six minutes, seven seconds left in the ball game. 49 to eight. Harding way out in front on a homecoming evening. A little starting to cool off here at Harding temperature wise but you can bet the spirits of the fans of the Rams are sky high right now this looking more like the Ram team that made it to the playoffs last year and this is the kind of game they needed to get in high gear throwing over the middle complete lying and 83 he's got a lot of field in front of him broke another tackle Thompson stops and finally he got down to the 20 and it's a 38-yard pass by Loing to Joey Hustedler. And Buford was the man that got there to tackle him. But a great catch and good run afterwards by Hustedler. 
just a great individual run that time. A little 10 yard look in. Caught Garinger coming in on a blitz. So first and 10 for Harding at the Garinger 20. Loying is back to pass. Rolling to the near side to the end zone. Well, he was going for the corner and number 88 flags are down. Going to have a holding or a pass interference on number 20 from Garinger. That's Kim Cornelius, I believe. Yes, Kim Cornelius. He wanted to find number 88 for the intended receiver, Donald Walker. But a pass interference call we expect to see. Yes, that's the call against Garinger. So let's see where that's going to move it down to the 11-yard line. And it'll be first down and 10 for Harding there. And Tom, what can you say about the Rams tonight? They have just done everything right offensively. In fact, the defense hasn't been bad either. They've only allowed one score. Long calling signals, three receivers. Well, we're gonna have a legal procedure maybe against the offense there. Yep, illegal motion. Well, anytime you blow a team out like this, Jeff, I'm not saying the same thing would happen tomorrow night, but they had all the cogs working. They had Byers doing the running up the middle, picking up seven and eight yards every time he carries the ball. Well, you defend against the run, and you have Houston drop back. As I think his first three or four passes were touchdowns. Three of them. Well, I, I know what I'm saying. He's got five touchdowns, and we, he could possibly have as many as seven to be within one yard away of having seven touchdowns. That's incredible. When you've got a quarterback like that, a running back like they have, you're going to score those points when they're all working, and the defense uh, gives you the ball back in good position. Petty makes a nice run down. Uh, it's knocked out of bounds. A gain of 10 yards. So even he has had a good night on six carries. He's got 46 yards unofficially. Byers on the night, the star for the ground attack. Three car uh, 19 carries, 135 yards. I'll probably run the 100 in about 16 seconds, Jeff, and I'd say that I could go through some of those holes that the parting lines opened up tonight. They have been massive. Throwing for the corner of the end zone. It's tipped and picked off by David Thompson. So the defense comes up with a play for Garinger, denying Harding another touchdown. Alley-oop does not pay off for Harding. Lying throws it. Interception for Lying. It's hard to get the timing down when you have your second string in running. But they did carry the ball down inside the 10-yard line. That was a... That was a nice offensive set by the Harding. Digsby back to pass, throws over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Waugh. And it goes incomplete. It's tough to do a little turn in in the middle, and you know you're going to get popped that time. That time he throws short, caught. No, it's incomplete. He got through. It was intended, I think, for 22 that time. That was a mix-up in the pass pattern. You don't ever want to have two, an end and a uh, slot man coming in the same area, and both of them crisscrossed at the same time. That, that was just a foul up in that play. Well, Digsby calls for a timeout with 4.47 left in the game. 49-8, to eight. Harding out in front, well on their way to a homecoming win. With this win, Harding on the year will be 5-2. and two. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, even though they're getting beat 49 to 8 and they uh, haven't got a whole lot to cheer about, they look good cheering, don't they? They sure do. Do they have any ugly women at Garinger? I hadn't seen one. And we just got an official indication on the injury to Sean Kelly, the wide receiver of Garinger, a broken wrist. And that's certainly bad news for the Wildcats and for Sean Kelly. He is being taken to the hospital. Now we certainly wish him the best. Digsby throwing the pass incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Sean Kelly has had such a, a, a really good season. Next week, we're going to see another exciting quarterback, Maurice Flowers. He can do it all. That's right, and he's not alone just uh, in the passing game, not the only thing the Eagles have. They've got a pretty good running attack led by Reggie Gordon. You'll see him some next week in Darrell Brown company. 
They get the punt away. And a good return out across midfield to the 43-yard line of Garinger. That's by 22 of the Harding Rams, Calvin Smith. First 10 for Harding. Next week, of course, the hometown Cable 3 game of the week coming to you live. Well, coming to you, uh, take delay from Myers Park High School, the Mustangs playing host to the East Mac Eagles. Next week for these two teams, Garinger goes home for their homecoming. They'll be playing host to the Independence Patriots, and Harding goes on the road, and really on the road, up to Boiling Springs to take on the Crest Chargers. Crest is in for surprise, aren't they? Maybe more surprise than they want. Well, they were um, they were up here and had a scout tonight, scouting Anthony Houston, and they act like the, they didn't know whether he was that good or not. They said he likes to go for the bomb early, so they uh, plan on defending that, I'm sure. But whether they can stop it or not, the guy can thread a needle from 35 yards. I give him an opening. You know, half the quarterbacks, or, or most all the quarterbacks in high school, if a man's wide open, they'll hit him half the time. But it seems like Anthony Houston, if he has a man that's uh, open, he's going to hit him 75% of the time. And most of those pass plays are 25 and 30 yard pass plays. He proved it tonight, and he just blistered the team. Uh, Byers running attack. That's just right. Too much to handle for Gary. For anybody, the kind of game they've had tonight, it has been outstanding. Petty lost nine on that carry. But I, I will say one thing about Anthony Houston. He needs, if there's only one thing in his game he needs to practice, it's the rollout, throwing off the run, uh, left and right. He is a pure drop back passer, and if you give him plenty of time, he is going to burn you alive. Now we talked about Byers, we talked about the receivers, we talked about the quarterback. 84 is going to get this one and get pounded by Buford. So he's not getting anywhere. A loss of about six on the play. And we're going to talk about the men that made the offense success responsible for Harding. The offensive line, they deserve the credit. Starting at left tackle, number 65, Sam Presley. At left guard, number 68, Raymond Crenshaw. At center, number 55, Bobby Hansen. At right guard, 57, Mark Lattimore. And at right tackle, number 77, Chris Briggs. Those five men have given Anthony Houston the time he's needed to do his work tonight. They've opened some gaping holes for the running attack, and they deserve all the credit in the world. And they've got uh, some excellent teammates uh, to uh, do the damage if they can give them the holes, and they've done that tonight. And believe this or not, if you want to, Jeff, I know Coach Rigo, the defensive coordinator for the Harding Rams, and they won this game 49 to 8, and he's going to harp on the touchdown they scored all week long. <laughs> the defense is going to get tired and say, what are you talking about? We won 49. He said, yeah, but you gave up eight. If we wouldn't have scored offensively, we'd have got beat eight to zip. So I know uh, he's not going to let up on the on practice. We've got the punter. Marshall is down for Garinger. The punt was away. To give you an idea about Crest and how good Crest defense can be, as Garinger comes out to attend to the injured player, Tim Marshall, last week Crest played West Mecklenburg, who has another great quarterback in Derek McGowan in an explosive offense. West Mec won that game, but only 14 to nothing. So Crest showed that their defense can be pretty tough, and it was pretty tough in that game. They're known for defense, but they don't have a lot of offense. So that's, uh, Harding has so much. I'll tell you, Tom, I'm really looking forward as we see Tim Marshall up. There's Dale Rainey on the sideline. Looking forward to next week right now. Has had a pretty good game, though, himself. He can't be too disappointed. And there's Tim Marshall coming to the sideline. In two weeks from tonight is the game I'm really looking forward to, a tri-county matchup. As we go to West Mecklenburg, the Harding Rams will be there, and Anthony Houston will be there, but Derek McGowan will also be there for the West Mac Indians, and we want offense. That could be the offensive game of the year for us so far. Rigsby back to pass, throwing for Brian Watts incomplete. I think the most important thing is that hometown Cable 3 will be there. That's right. We'll be there, and that's going to be a great game. Be a valuable seat. That ought to be a packed house. And if uh, West Mac continues to win, it's going to be a big conference game. Pass complete by Digsby to 84. And he's up close to the first down. We've got a penalty flag. That's one thing we hadn't had uh, that much of tonight. That was a penalty. And the Garager fans are 
working now. The band loading up. A legal procedure against the Wildcats. And we're down to 133 left in the fourth quarter. Harding has sealed up their fifth victory of the year. 49 to 8 is the score right now. It was a great game for everybody concerned as far as the Harding Rams are concerned. Anthony Houston throwing for five touchdown passes, 223 yards. There's a long pass incomplete by Rick Digsby. Jonathan Byers, great running, 135 yards unofficially with three touchdowns, I believe, on the night for him. And the Harding Rams rolling and just had a great game. So Harding getting pumped up, and they go to Crest next week for a big game for the Tri-County 4A as they try to get ready for that showdown with West Mecklenburg, which is only two weeks away. Digsby back to pass. Pressure coming, a sea of maroon, and Digsby is going to be sunken. So big loss, and what can you do? When you go back, you're the quarterback, you're down 49 to 8, and six red jerseys come through. That's got to be a sick feeling. Sick or scared, I don't know which one it would be. It'd be scared if I was back there having to, on these hobbled legs of mine, trying to outrun those big offensive line, uh, defensive linemen from Harding. So Garrett, you're down to a fourth down play. So if they, regardless what happens here, if they get the first down and they need about uh, 40 yards to get the first down, they'll have maybe one more play left with 40 seconds on the clock. If they don't get it, Harding will take it over and presumably would just run it out because they would not have to run another offensive play. So the Wildcats, it's been a night where the offense has done some things, but the defense has not been able to do much. They got eight points, one series where the offense got going good, but the Ram defense has hung tough most of the night. And the Ram offense just leveled Garinger's defense early in the game and put Garinger in a deep deficit at halftime, 35 to nothing, and they've never been able to recover from that. They give it to Reggie Miller, and Miller gets it to the 20. So Harding will get the football if they, well, let's see. We've got a, the clock has stopped at 31 seconds. Now they're going to let it run it again. Harding gets it probably this will be the last play if they elect to run one. More than likely, they'll probably just go down with it. But as you said, Tom, we've learned to expect the unexpected from Harding, so no telling. <laughs> this, I hope this is predictable. Lawing pitches out to Petty. He's going to run out of bounds. I don't believe it. They pull him out of bounds. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Well, the clock should have stopped, but they don't stop it. Let's see. I don't think the officials are going to complain about that. Let's see the. Well, the teams are coming out. So that is the end of the ball game. And from Harding High School homecoming night, the Rams win in a big way, 49 to 8 over the Garinger Wildcats. The Rams up to 5 and 2 on the year, their third win in a row, and Garinger drops to 1 and 6 on the year. And uh, they lost in a big one tonight, but. Tom, all you can say, just brilliant offense for the Harding Rams. Anthony Houston was incredible, and so was his running back, Joe Byers, Jonathan Byers. I told you that Anthony Houston was a good ball player. We saw evidence of it tonight. We got a surprise from Jonathan Bauer, uh, Byers. His running ability, he's slithery, he's fast. Houston picked him apart, and Byers ran through him. That's why you get a 49-8 ball game. And... Uh, <laughs> they just it was brutal after the first half what can we say so we remind you that next week will be a Myers Park the Mustangs against the East Mech Eagles and for the all volunteers